Crystal Palace has just given me hope for the first time this season. I've waited long enough, I'm going to be talking about them. After a really rough season so far, we finally got hope with the hire of Oliver Glasner as manager. He comes in from Germany, where he managed Wolfsburg and Frankfurt. He had a good run in Austria as well. At Wolfsburg, he took them to the Champions League, a great achievement for that club. And then he won the Europa League with Frankfurt, and then the next season got them into the Champions League knockout round. He's a manager with a track record of success, an ambitious hire, and even his style of play, I think it works with Crystal Palace. His teams can be fun, but it is a bit of a pragmatic style. He's not throwing caution to the wind or anything, and realistically, that works with Crystal Palace. And after so many seasons of just the slog, especially this one, it's nice to get a real good manager in and an ambitious hire, and I'm really excited to see what he can do. But Glasner will need a full summer transfer window to really make this team his. In order to get to that summer, Palace have to survive this season. And if Everton and Forrest don't receive a points deduction or another points deduction, which I think they will, but you can't bank on it, it's not going to be an easy task to survive. Palace are only five points above the relegation zone in bad form and dealing with a lot of injuries. It's going to be a tough task for Glasner to get this team back on form because it's been a pretty bad season. In fact, in my over 10 years of being a Crystal Palace fan, I think it's the most disappointing season I've ever seen. I mean, there have been a lot of injuries to some of our best players, which has certainly taken this toll. But more than anything, this season just feels like treading water. That was the feeling heading into this season when Roy Hodgson was brought back, and it has certainly played out over the course of this year. Now, Hodgson has just been hospitalized, and obviously, get well soon, Roy. I'm hoping you can recover and come back to Selhurst Park to get a proper send-off at the end of the season. And let's celebrate one of his best achievements, keeping Crystal Palace up the year Frank DeBoer was hired. To keep the team up after having an 0-7 start or whatever it was, that was a remarkable achievement. But even towards the end of his first run, it was clear he was kind of overstaying his welcome. His really defensive style of play was just kind of draining to watch, and it was clear while he was at the club, the team didn't have any goals, any ambitions to really improve. And I won't even say that he saved the club last season. He came into a team going into a really easy run of games, and they were already above the relegation zone. Not cutting Vieira any slack, he didn't play Eze for no reason, and it got him fired. But that first season under Vieira was more exciting than anything while we played under Roy Hodgson. I remember looking at the lineup before an Everton game in the FA Cup quarterfinals and seeing Zaha, Olise, Eze, and Gallagher, who was there on loan, just being so excited, and that game was so fun to watch. And I maintain that if Gallagher was allowed to play against Chelsea, we win the FA Cup. But Vieira couldn't adjust without Gallagher that game, and he couldn't adjust without Gallagher the entire next season, and he was deservingly fired. But there was a feeling of excitement with Vieira around the club that just wasn't there any time Roy Hodgson was at the club. But blame for the manager can only go so far. I mean, it's the players who are on the field, and a lot, the majority of these players, haven't been good enough. And I'm going to start at the back with the goalkeepers, who I'm going to be a bit harsh with, because they are talented, good players who have had success in the past who just haven't been good enough. Sam Johnston and Dean Henderson have been making far too many mistakes. Going to start off with Sam Johnston. I heard a lot of people calling for him to get back into the lineup, and, well, are you happy? He just made him another mistake that cost us two points against Everton. And with Johnston, going into this year, my view on him had been this. He might not be the best shot stopper in the Premier League. He might not be the best with his feet, but he's a solid all-around player, and more than that, he's just consistent. He's somebody who won't make a big mistake. He won't cost you any points. He might not be able to win you them like some other players, but he's going to be a solid presence who you know you can count on. And I think that's why he's been in the England team. Because Southgate knows that if there's an injury, you can put in Johnston, and he will be a solid presence. He'll be decent with his feet, and he won't cost you any points. That hasn't been the case this season. He's been making far too many mistakes, and I think that is right that he's not a guaranteed starter. Dean Henderson hasn't been much better, though. Now, with Henderson, his shot stopping is really good, to the point that I think it could just win us some points if he gets some consistent playing time. But he's been far too erratic this season. Now, Johnston has made some mistakes that have cost us points, and I will be critical of him for that. But with Henderson, it's every game. He just feels so shaky in goal, and he has made mistakes that have led to goals for other teams. 
And in addition, his ability with his feet, his ability to control his box, it's much worse than Johnston. It's hard to say. Like, I do want to compile a stat that really tracks a full goalkeeper performance, but the information just isn't there. Let me know if you have any information to get better goalkeeper stats. But with Henderson, it's hard to say if he should start or not because maybe the mistakes are just coming because he hasn't been receiving much playing time. His match sharpness isn't there. And his ceiling with his shot stopping is much higher than Johnston. But maybe it's just who Henderson is, and these mistakes will keep happening no matter what. And either way, he has been making mistakes, and he hasn't seized the opportunity that he's been given. Right now, I'd be fine if Johnston starts. If Glasner puts Henderson in a goal, I won't have any complaints, though, either. But they need to get together because those are both two talented goalkeepers, two England goalkeepers, and I think they can do much better. And last season, bad goalkeeper performances cost Leicester and Leeds their spot in the Premier League, and that could happen to us. But even if the goalkeepers improve, it won't help much because our defense has been bad this season. Now Mark Gahey, very good, not going to be critical of him. But his center back partner, Joachim Anderson, what happened to him? I'm actually upset with him because, again, like the goalkeepers, I know he's a good player, but his performance hasn't been up to his standard this year. He's looked a lot worse defensively when Gahey's been out of the team, and his passing has taken a massive step back. He needs to redefine his form, and if he doesn't, Palace are definitely in trouble. The fullbacks have also been pretty bad, but I'm going to be less critical of them because they're just not as good. Joel Ward, amazing servant to the club, but... He should have been replaced when Aaron Wambasaka left. It's just unfortunate that Nathan Ferguson hasn't been able to stay healthy. Tyreek Mitchell at the left, he's an academy graduate. I think he's fine defensively, but he offers nothing going forward. If he wasn't left-footed, he wouldn't be in the Premier League. And if he wasn't an academy graduate, the criticism for him would be a lot heavier. But they kind of have to start. Rob Holding was signed from Arsenal, but unfortunately he hasn't been able to stay healthy. And that has forced a lot of playing time onto Chris Richards, who probably just isn't a starter-level player in the Premier League. He has done well with his versatility. I think he was all right in midfield. He certainly wasn't a downgrade on Jeffrey Schlupp or Will Hughes, but those are championship players. And I don't think Richards has the quality that we need at this level. And with that, the depth in this team just isn't there. I mean, I like Gahey. I think he's a Premier League-level player. I think he's a Champions League-level player. And Anderson, I've seen him be a very good center back in the past. I think big clubs were interested in him, and I can see why. But outside of those two, it's mostly dead weight. Another problem this year has been the midfield. I will give the caveat that the midfield is good when everybody is available. However, injuries have happened. Jack Decore, great player, really strong defensive midfielder good at breaking up plays, really good at retaining the ball. Liverpool were interested in him this season, and I do think we should have sold him, but I'm getting kind of ahead of myself. One of the reasons I believe that is because Lerma has also been really solid as a defensive midfielder, one of the few Premier League-level players in this team. And then Eze is a remarkable talent. Always want him on the field, but he's been injured a lot this season. And with Decore's injury, with Eze's injuries this season, our lack of depth is really showing. Hughes, Schlupp, Riedewald, all of them are not good enough for the Premier League, and Hughes and Schlupp especially have played a lot this season, and the depth in midfield does need to get better. However, at least the only issue is that injuries are affecting the team right now. It's not as bad as the attack. With the attack, like I talked about with the defense in Gehi, Olise is exempt from criticism this year, but he's hardly played. He's been amazing when he has, but he's hardly seen the field. And it's not because he's like an injury-prone guy or anything. It's because Roy Hodgson worked him to death. Outside of Elise, which has been most of the season, the attack is bad. Ayu is a really skilled player, but his end product isn't good enough for this level. Hopefully we get more performances like we got against Everton, but it's not consistent enough. And Edward and Matet are just trash. Edward at least has flashes of quality. Like, you can tell that there's like a decent player in there, but it hasn't been shown consistently enough. Mateta is just big. And I know what it's like to have a hold-up player, a big striker up front who can be valuable for the team even when they're not scoring. We had Benteke after he lost all confidence in front of goal, and even when he wasn't scoring, like, you could see why he was in the team. Mateta is just big, and we should have let him go at the end of his loan spell. This is a team full of championship players, and the only reason we're surviving 
is because we have like six really good talents that are carrying the team. One example is Michael Olise in his last few starts against uh, Sheffield United and Brentford, where he carried our team while pushing through injury to a valuable six points. It's some of the gutsiest performances I've ever seen from a Crystal Palace player. Like, he is so good. I'm not joking. Like, I am a little bit biased, but I'm not joking. He should be in the France squad for the upcoming Euro if he's able to recover. And if he's able to recover and get back to full form, I'd start him over Dembele. I like Elise that much. And the rest of the team, also really good talents in there. Eze, such a creative player. So fun to watch him and Elise go to work. Another guy able to carry the team to points. Another guy who I think has a Champions League future ahead of him. Then we've got a solid defense behind that, a solid core of players. Mark Gahey, another guy, Champions League level player. Anderson hasn't been the best this season. We've seen him be good in the past. Decore, he's injured right now. He's out for the season. Really good defense midfielder. And I've been impressed with Lerma this season. Those six have been carrying this team, helping us stay afloat. Good news, though. This past winter window, we got that number up from six to eight because Munoz and Adam Morton are two good players. Munoz is a right back, finally giving us a good player at that position for the first time since Aaron Wambasaka was sold to Manchester United and Joel Ward's prime days. But man, watching him go up the field and combined with Ayu was just like, oh, this is what it's like to have an attacking fullback. I forgot what it felt like. Really solid player there, good defensively as well. And then Adam Morton. Yeah, he's going to be a good player. Another guy who, it's a bit early, he does have some things to work out, but Champions League future. He's our next great buy from the championship. Um, Elise Eze, he's in that category. He's only just turned 20. He is special on the ball. He's been good defensively as well. A remarkable young talent. And he's not the only good young player in the squad. Mateus Franca has a ton of talent. His first step, his ability to beat players off the dribble, it is all special. Now, he is very raw, and I'm not arguing for him to start, especially not over Elise or Ayu, but he needs to see the field more. There was a moment this year against Man City where he was taking on Kyle Walker, and he was beating him with an ease that I don't think I've ever seen a player do, and he was doing it consistently. Now, it was towards the end of the game, Walker was tired, he was fresh, he just came off the bench, but do that more! Bring him off the bench 20 or 30 minutes, basically every game. Let him develop and let him help out the team because he's certainly capable of it. And the academy has been producing good players. JRS has really shined in some moments before he ended up getting injured. He's been out for a while. And David Ozo has come in towards the end of games and really helped us seal up wins. And he hasn't been a drop-off compared to other midfielders. Now, like I said with Richards, he's coming on for championship-level players and not dropping off. But still, to be 18 and be able to play at that level, that is good. That is noticeable. And as our academy has continued to develop, it's become Category 1, we've only continued to produce good players. But there can be a bit of a problem with getting these guys on the field. Let's look at David Ozo, for example. And I'm not just talking about, oh, Roy Hodgson wouldn't trust the youngsters at all, which he wouldn't, but that's not the point. If we're looking at things realistically... The midfield has Decore, really good player. Lerma, he's been really good this year. Wharton, he's looking like a special talent. And Eze, another really good player. It's kind of tough to get Ozo on the field for any meaningful minutes. And with wingers as well. I mean, Ayu, his consistency with his end product just isn't there, but really talented at everything else with his game. And you want Elise on the field as much as possible when he's healthy, Roy. So it's kind of tough to find playing time for both JRS and Franca. So I want to introduce a new idea to Crystal Palace. This is going to be a radical idea, but I think it could work for us. Sell players. Listen, I'm going to be sad when Michael Elise moves on. He's a special player. It's really fun to watch him. But we have good wingers waiting in the wings, and the sale that Elise's money would generate would help us buy more players. And we've been pretty good at buying players lately. Dougie Friedman has done a great job scouting talents, and Manchester United tried to poach him from us for a reason. Like, let's look at the guys we bought, spent money on over the last three years. Eduardo Mateta haven't been good. It's still a bit early to tell for Richards, Holding, Henderson, and Amida. But everybody else has been a hit. I mean, the worst out of them is Will Hughes, but for the money he spent, 
Good player, solid servant to the club. Franca, an amazing talent. Munoz looks really good. Adam Warren looks like he's going to be a special player. DeCorey was our player of the year last season. Gay and Anderson formed a great center back pairing. And Michael Elise is a special talent. The only guy who's moved on is Jake O'Brien, and he's playing at Leon. And because of that, I've heard people say that selling O'Brien was a mistake. No, that's good. We got money for him, and he's doing well elsewhere. That's what we want. If he was still at Crystal Palace, he'd just be sitting behind Gahey and Anderson and maybe Richards. Like, we should want that to happen more. I mean, we've seen the model that Brentford and Brighton have used to dramatic success, and we'd be stupid not to replicate it. I mean, we let Wilfred Zaha leave on a free a player who we probably could have gotten 50 million pounds for. Now, we shouldn't have sold him at a certain time because he single-handedly kept this club up for a few years. But to leave, let him go on a free, I mean, technically we got a profit off him because David Moyes and Manchester United were stupid, but to let him go on a free, a player who, and I will die on this hill, a top five winger in the Premier League, that should be infuriating to us. We should be willing to sell players and make a profit off of them. And I'm not talking about a fire sale. We should keep one of Eze or Lise, keep one of Decorey and Gehi, but we should be willing to sell our players. I'm going to go into an idea that I talked about in my Brighton video, but only like 10 people watched that, so I'm just going to repeat myself. Brighton have a really good strategy of bringing in players, and they bring in two different sets of players. Guys who are going to be core Brighton players, and players to raise their value to sell. The core players are guys like Lewis Dunk, Sully March, well, they're academy guys, and Gross, and Welbeck, and Vaultman, guys who come into Brighton to be solid Premier League players. You know what you're going to get from them. They're going to stay at Brighton, help set the culture, and make sure they always have a good enough core in the team to stay competitive and avoid relegation. But in addition to that, Brighton bring in high potential young talents that they can help develop and grow into players with huge price tags. I'm talking the likes of McAllister, Caicedo, Basuma, and so many more who come in, raise the level of Brighton, play great for them, and then get sold for a huge profit. And with the money, they can replace them with more high potential young players. Right now they have the likes of Evan Ferguson, Jal Pedro, and Drenga, and more. And along the way, some of those guys might end up staying, becoming core players. Guys like Matoma and Billy Gilmore. I think they might be staying at Brighton for a long time. Maybe some of the guys I mentioned earlier could as well. Just because they sold players doesn't mean they lack ambition. And Crystal Palace needs to become comfortable with the idea of selling players. So while it may hurt to lose Michael Elise, it will hurt. He's been such a fun player to watch. He's carried this team. He might be the most talented guy to play for Crystal Palace ever. We need to have faith in scouting guys like Mateus Franca. Have faith in the hotbed that is South London to produce players like JRS. And maybe with the sale, the money that Michael Elise generates, we'll be able to improve the team. Maybe we can have a Premier League level left back for the first time since Ashley Cole came on loan when he was a teenager. Maybe have a 10 goal a season striker, which has only happened once in our spell since promotion. And maybe we can become a club that has a real positive momentum, not just a mid-table club that's treading water that will inevitably get unlucky one season and get relegated. Thankfully, that change has already started. Oliver Glasner is the most ambitious managerial hire we've had since Frank DeBoer, but I, I like Glasner. I like Glasner. I mentioned his track record of success everywhere he's gone, and I think he can really improve the team. His squad looks good defensively with a back three. He counterattacks well. The pressing looks very good. And he's done well with strikers. Felt Veghurst hit 20 goals. Kolomani came into himself. And that's so exciting for a team that has really struggled with goals in the past. I'm excited about Glasner's hire. And I'm excited to be a Crystal Palace fan for the first time in a long time. I think this past summer, our ownership group took our Premier League status for granted. And it's taken until now to correct that mistake. I'm hopeful that we'll be able to stay up due to the bottom of the league just not being that good. Hopefully the new manager bounce will help out the team, we'll get healthier, and maybe Everton and Forest will end up getting deducted points. And if that's able to happen, it'll be such a fun watch in April and May when we're safe, and we get to watch Eze, Elise, Franca, Wharton, Decore, Lerma, Munoz, Gehi, Anderson, all of these really good players in a squad that has a ton of potential, and I'm really excited to see what Oliver Glasner can do with that. But we need to continue to show ambition. 
because next season, the Premier League's looking like it's going to be a lot stronger, and it's not a given that we'll survive. We need to continue to invest in this squad, get comfortable with selling players and allowing them to leave, and if we're able to do that with the players we have now, with the infrastructure that's getting in place, the academy especially is looking really promising leading into the future, I think there's a lot of reason to be excited as a Crystal Palace fan. And yeah, that's all I got to talk about. I wanted to talk about my club for the first time. Haven't really gotten to this year and just wanted to make this and talk about them. If you enjoyed, like, subscribe, that. See ya.